What's going on, guys? This is Scott. You made it to the drip, home of the 150% guarantee. Every knife has a story. We try to touch base, whether it's the beginning, middle, end. Go over, review, give overviews, discuss, and do what we do, which is playing with knives just a little bit, kind of getting a feel and uh, telling you my opinions, what I like, dislike, all the little pointers, and then uh, open it for a little discussion. So glad that you could join me. If you're a subscriber, thank you for coming back. If this is your first time, hopefully we're going to make it be something that's going to become a habit. Uh, so we are going to take a look at one of the companies that I think is doing a excellent job at overall kind of like a budget type knife, but they're anything but a budget as far as the value, the construction, the presentation, and that is Kubi. And I had reviewed a, well, at this point, being that it is July 25th, it's Monday. Now, where you're at, you could have been in a time capsule. Maybe you were a caveman that was unthawed. This could be the year 3000. We just don't know where you're at and what you're doing. Hope you have a smile on your face. Back to not being distracted. So, I had done a Kubi previously, and I, I'm going to do some more reviews on Kubi because I like them, for one. And kind of, I don't want to compare, but I would say price-wise, I think they're very similar um, to Kershaw's. And some of the things that I like, you know, you can find them anywhere between 50 and, you know, 200 or, or a low price range, but they're all over. Because the blade steels are going to be different. Uh, and then different materials and such. So this is the Kubi Raven that we're going to look at. So when I first saw this particular blade and had browsed a little bit, read a little bit about it, Really liked it. I liked the design. It jumped out of me, out at me, just kind of looking at you know the blade shape, handle, geometry. Just like anything, the first thing that we're usually going to do is we see something, then we gravitate towards it, learn more about it, and then kind of go from there. Uh, the Kubi Raven. This is Kubis are made in China. Good product. The uh, name of, I guess it's the designer or person who came up with this is, it always kind of makes me laugh and smile. It is gel, uh, is that, what is that? Jelly, Jelly Jerry. Now I'm not familiar and that's who designed it. I I have no clue who that is, but the, the sheer fact that the name is Jelly, um, uh, Reminds me of that song that was, she don't use jelly or any of those things. She uses fat. Who, I forgot who sang that song. Huh. But anyways, um, not to digress. So that is the designer. These things I believe are right around $70. I got it on the Kubi website. And it's a flipper, okay, just kind of going um, on the action here. It's a nice smooth action, as you can see. Nice feel. You can close it one-handed. Pretty drop shutty. I mean, again, this is a, a $70 price point. Now you can also, with this particular one, it's a little bit tougher, but you can middle flick, finger flick, spidey flick it. And I kind of like knives where I have a, a couple of different options for opening them just so I can fidget with it a little bit more. So yeah, you can do that. Uh, this is going to be on caged ceramic ball bearings, which I'm a fan of because I think that uh, for the most part, 
being on ball bearings, to me, it just seems a little bit more fluid, a little smoother. So that's kind of the way that the action works on it. As you can see, this blade, it came straight up, right down the middle for us. That's always nice to see. No fidget adjustment, anything like that. Looks good on the, uh, the line up here. The blade itself is a dark, uh, this particular blade. Now, again, they do have different handles, different bl uh, blade types uh, and makeups. So what I'm going over here uh, is the $70. Now, there could be ones that are cheaper or more expensive of the Raven. This is just the particular one that I have. So the blade itself is a dark stone washed. Kind of look at the, uh, the blade itself here, if I can zoom up just a little bit for you guys to take a look at that. Now, I do like this because it's going to be able to hide uh, some of your nicks or a little bit of wear on here because the blade to me almost looks a little bit distressed already. So, came super sharp. Another thing about Kubis, I have never had a problem with anything coming to me that, I mean, they're all super razor sharp. It's an Aus 10, and you have the uh, little logo here on the front, the show side, the back side here is where we have the uh, design, and then right here, back towards the handle, you have the Aus 10, which is a good steal. It's, it's a, to me, I mean, I've not had any problems sharpening it or using it or, or noticing that there, uh, you know, were any issues with it. So I don't mind an Aus 10. I know that uh, Cold Steel uses that in some of theirs as well. So it's a drop point that we have. It's a flat grind from the back here all along. Uh, this is a nice little uh, sharpening choil. Not going to be able to put your finger in there, but I mean, it's not really meant for that. I guess you could brace it a little bit. But the handle itself, you do have kind of a built-in choil here uh, behind your flipper. Okay. And so when you're on the handle here, you have a nice little jimping up at the top, the back of the spine on the top of the blade. Nice swedge down the top leading to the tip of the blade here. So you kind of take this down to a nice tip. This narrows out, gives you uh, the belly that kind of leads up and meets the blade here. So it's gonna be really good at being able to pierce taking this and flow into a stab and then cut, you would be able to do some good slicing. I think this overall, if you're in the market for a very decent priced size flipper, a little fidgety, good performing EDC, and you just, maybe you're urban and you're in the city or you just need something to do, random tasks for you, I think this would be ideal. I really think it's gonna be working well for you. You've got the uh, little emblem here uh, for the Kubi on the pivot. Flip it over. I'm not sure what size that takes, but uh, you've got your pivot on this side that you can adjust if need be. Um, and then so back to the handle. The handle itself, uh, this is going to be a jade or a, it's really like a natural G10. I like as well because it almost looks like it should be something that glows in the dark, although this doesn't. Uh, I've always liked natural G10. I just, I've got a few other types of blades that I have that uh, I enjoy these handles, I really do. Fits well in the hand. Um, I have a large glove that I wear, and so wrapping or locking into the blade here, uh, up against the choil, you're locked and secured. 
You have a texture on this handle. If you can take a look at this, you can see the texturing all along the handle. Now, other than the back of the blade here, you don't have any jimping on the knife. Now, you do have a little bit here on the bottom because this being a liner lock, you have a little jimping under here. Now, your finger will naturally feel this jimping, but it, it's very non-abrasive. It's all You can barely tell that it's there, but it just gives you a little bit added traction. You have that uh, texturing, both sides of the handles. So when you're holding this, you got the full handle. I've got, uh, my whole hand is going to be on the handle itself. So nothing, I mean, I even have just a little extra. And this particular knife, it's not uncomfortable because you have a nice smooth area for the rest of your fingers to wrap around and nothing is gonna be pinched or forced to be in any direction on this area. So whether you have a little larger hand or a little smaller hand, this is going to give you plenty of room to lock in. And then having your thumb up at the top here if you need to, that's gonna give you more of your control with your push cuts or if you're needing to do some type of a detailed tip work, carving, cleaning something out, um, that's gonna give you some really nice control on that. So I like that very much. Again, it is a liner lock. So as we deploy that, you can look, you've got steel liners that run the full handle, like many liner locks do goes around and those steel liners are going to fully encase the inside of these uh, G10 handles. Let's just look to see, because we like to be thorough as we can. Uh, there is some milling in here. So we see that this does have, right there, you get a really good shot of that, guys. Take a look there. You have some great uh, skeletonization there, some milling on the inside to reduce the weight on the overall, uh, the knife itself. So that's going to help reduce that. The lockup is great. I do like these for a liner lock because even though the liner is a little thinner. Now, typically I like frame locks because I'd much rather have a thicker bar here or a support that is going to be part of the handle. But in this case, I think you're fine with this. It's a little thinner, but this actually runs all the length of the handle you see you have a good lockup here. I mean, we that's to me, that's a perfect lockup. And you're rock steady. This thing isn't wobbling. It's not moving. It's a very sturdy lockup. Feels very secure. I, I enjoy it, actually. It feels well. So I am impressed with that. Uh, you do have a, a backspacer here in the back. This is a G10 backspacer. It looks great, too, the way it's done. I mean, it runs that whole area. You do have a little cutout area here in this area. And this is going to be where, if you want to put a lanyard, you can go right down through here, loop it through. And the nice thing is, is that this area here, was your when you're carrying, using it, you don't see that there's a big hole or anything that is extended out of the handle. It's all almost hidden in here. So I like that, the way they designed that. And then that's your G10 backspacer here that runs around from the back. The grip on here, if we flip this over, you have that nice flat plateau here on the back of the knife that you can cradle or actually Put your thumb on the top of here, and this gives you a tremendous amount of control, grip to hold the knife. If you need to have this, if you need to pierce or stab using the knife in a reverse carry, you have plenty of control, and this is going to help to keep it secure. Feeling in your hand and your pinky actually is going to feel great being locked into this area, so it's not uncomfortable at all. That's all down to design. They did a really, Jelly, you did a great job of designing this particular knife. 
really happy with that. So yes, you got a lanyard hole if it's something that you guys like. Um, now also the clip, this is going to be a tip up. You can go right or left hand. So you can flip this. It is fully uh, ambidextrous. So whether it's your left or right, you're gonna have full use of it just the same. I like the black too with the G10, just the way that it kind of sets off. So yeah, I've had this for probably, I'd say maybe a month, just kind of carrying it around a little bit the last uh, week, just to get a feel in and out of the pocket. I do like this pocket clip, has the little lip up, and then you can uh, push this down onto your pocket it's almost, it's a deep carry clip, but you're gonna have a little area here, which is about a half a thumbnail or so, that's gonna stick out from the pocket, which isn't bad. I mean, I use this area just to kind of pull it out. But, um, you know, it's a minimalist clip, nothing too big, nothing too long. Very simple, black is gonna just blend into your pocket anyways, even if you have blue jeans, black jeans, green jeans, well, unless you have white jeans or pink jeans or who knows, maybe yellow jeans. I don't know. Kids nowadays. So, let's see. That's good. And overall, hey, guys, I think you got a winner here for the price. I'm going to be doing more Kubis in the future just because I think it's such a great company and a great product. And for being my, uh, this is my choice for a budget line or a budget knife with options. So I'm gonna be coming out with some other stuff here in the near future, not just uh, Kubis, but I got a couple of cool little knives I'm going to be reviewing. Uh, if you guys are interested, which I hope you are, if you've lasted this long, thank you. And um, like and subscribe. Hit the subscribe button, it's easy. Punch your ticket, jump on the raft. I'm gonna be the captain here. I'm not gonna let the boat sink. If we do, I promise I'll jump off first. And uh, with that being said, remember our pets, remember our vets, the little furry guys, the non-furry guys, the ones that always greet us, love us, kiss us. They're the innocent ones, and we want to make sure we take care of those guys, gals, everything in between. Also, the vets, the people that, the men and women that help us to remain and to keep our freedoms and that help to get us where we're at. We've got a lot of work in the area as a nation, guys. We're so divided at times, but, you know, to create things, you have to have a thought. That's the first process of taking action. So think positive and just uh, we can only control ourselves, not other people. Got to remember that. And uh, with that, love yourself, like who you see in the mirror. I appreciate you guys being a part of the growth of the channel. And until we meet again, hasta la vista.